In the Shadow of Liberty was made possible by the William Penn Foundation, the Philadelphia Archaeological Forum, Temple University, the McFeely Rogers Foundation, and the National Park Service. I forgot to thank the choir. That was so fabulous. In the third year of this new century, archaeologists and historians began a search for evidence of a man who lived during the birth of these United States. A man who was once enslaved. An African-American who helped build an independent community and establish social institutions that exist to this day. A man named James Orinoco Dexter. The search to uncover the truth about this man's life and deeds captivated and energized a small army of researchers and citizens. The fruits of their efforts cast a new light on the struggles of the nation's revolutionary generation to build a society equal to the grand ideals on which the new constitution was based. A struggle compromised by the stain of slavery. Philadelphia, a modern city rich with evidence of its distant past. What took place here over 200 years ago reverberated throughout the world. Courageous men and women devised the structures and laws of a government and the institutions of a society that remain today a marvel. For many, the history book story of America's past is populated with a familiar cast of characters and a parade of memorable dates. But how has history treated the lesser known, the obscure, the nearly forgotten men and women who walk these same streets alongside the likes of Franklin, Washington, and Jefferson? Among this mass of humanity were many who labored with courage and tenacity to build the enduring institutions we rely on today. History is about remembering, remembering who we are as a people. But history is also about forgetting. We select what we remember. And sometimes we purposely forget. We erase parts of history. We remember sometimes what we're proud of. And we forget sometimes or erase those parts that we find perhaps embarrassing or parts that don't fit the story we want to tell about ourselves, about who we are as a people. Every society has a duty to examine its history, to make it as complete, as truthful, as full and comprehensive as possible, to tell the real story, to tell the truth as best we see it at any given time. And that's a part of what happened here, was that process of rewriting history, of remaking history to serve the people we are today. History is all around us. As we walk streets of a city like Philadelphia, we're crossing places where people lived and made history. And cities remake themselves constantly. They're congested places where active day-to-day -day life plays out on a continuing basis. We build over, we replace, we even destroy historic places in the process of making the life we live today. This site is an example, an example of a place that we've come to realize has a lot to tell about who we are as a people. But it's still a useful part of the city today and has been remade to serve new functions. I think the important thing is we don't forget what happened on this place before it was a bus depot. We started excavation on the, the National Constitution Center site, which occupies all of Block 3, the northernmost block of Independence Mall, in June of 2000. 
Construction of a national museum dedicated to the appreciation of the United States Constitution was planned for the third block on Independence Mall in Philadelphia. With an optimistic grand opening date of July 4th, 2003, all building construction and exhibit design had to be accomplished within a tight schedule. As eager hands and heavy earth moving equipment move soil and demolition rubble, a startling picture of a vibrant 18th century neighborhood just a few blocks away from Independence Hall began to emerge. This turned out to be one of the great urban excavations ever undertaken in the United States. Archaeologists discovered essentially pristine 18th century ground surfaces. They pulled out over a million artifacts. The foundation walls of long forgotten homes and shops appeared beneath the modern cityscape, along with tens of thousands of fragments of plates, cups, and personal items. Artifacts that present a unique window into the lifeways of a diverse group of Philadelphians. Everything from parts of the city's first uh, water system, wooden pumps, to firearms, to children's toys that have been found literally where they had been dropped 200 years before. As the National Constitution Center neared completion, interest in one man's house caught the imagination of researchers and community leaders. Just outside the footprint of the building, there was a plot of land that had been occupied by James Dexter, a founding member of the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas. He seemed to be a central player in the formation of two absolutely critical, seminal institutions in uh, the formation of this country. We took another look at where his property was located. It was outside the footprint of the building of the National Constitution Center. In other words, it was not going to be impacted by construction. The National Constitution Center was already way into its construction phase. Uh, we were getting ready to construct the bus drop-off next to the building. We learned that there were no excavations planned of those properties. The Park Service's basic philosophy is if you don't need to impact a site, it is better served to leave in place so that future generations can, in fact, maybe with better technology, explore that particular site and even learn more about it than what we're capable of doing today. They came to this decision, I learned, without any consultation with any of the communities that would have a very direct interest in them. And we felt that it was important that that policy be looked at as a rule, but that this was an exceptional experience. Had we been talking about a grassy knoll in the middle of the mall, that could have been trusted for preservation for future excavation. The fact that we're talking about a bus turnaround, a bus depot, that made it highly unlikely in my mind that uh, the site was going to be preserved with integrity. Dr. Jeffrey Leith was the uh, uh, head of Mother Bethel at the time and he said, well, you know, at, this is a very typical American story that um, we can argue, we can, we can demonstrate and we can file suit and in the end they'll build their bus depot anyway on the backs of African-Americans. Both parties were not in agreement. There wasn't so much turmoil or, or controversy as there was a clear motivation on each side to press forward given their respective positions. It became clear to me that the Constitution Center as well as the Park Service perhaps was concerned that we were trying to establish a shrine. We don't want a shrine, we want an excavation. And at that point, it was like a, a light just clicked on and there was a tremendous flood of reason.